Hey Jason, this is Mike from DC. Love the show and thanks for taking my question. Based on strong customer feedback, my team and I have developed a Bluetooth device to go with our mobile app. We've got our Arduino prototype in place and ready to go to a small scale production. The only problem is we don't have the fifty or sixty thousand dollars to get rolling. We've got this lean startup system down for software, but hardware, eh, we don't know. What would you recommend? Thanks for everything you do to help a startups like ours live the dream. Okay, great question, Mike in DC. Um, yeah, building software, you don't have all this hard costs associated, and you have hardware, and hardware is hard. There's really only two or three choices here. The first is, of course, you can raise some funding from friends and family. But if you're going to go down the hardware route, you're going to have to have a lot of dry powder. You're going to need a lot of money, and you're going to need expertise on your team. And the reason I invested in Butterfly was because Ben, who is the CEO, is an engineer who's been doing hardware for a decade. When software companies start to think they can make the jump from making a prototype with an Arduino processor and then go into full-scale production, they are deluding themselves. Yes, you can build prototypes, but then going to production is extremely difficult and complicated, and if you make mistakes, your 50 or 60 could turn into 200, 300, $400,000 awfully quick. And getting to market and getting distribution at Amazon or Apple, it's really, really hard. Do not do it unless you can get funding, or here's another possibility, you might be able to find somebody who really wants that piece of hardware, and they want to buy a hundred of them or a thousand of them, right? So let's say you were making a device for dashboards that helped people who were, you know, it was for people who are driving. So it's like some sort of a dash cam that not only took a picture of what was going forward, it did it looking at the driver and then it uploaded it to Periscope, right? It was some sort of camera system that did a 360 degree view of the cabin of the car and what was going on in front of it, right? Pretty interesting. It's a pretty good idea actually. Well. You might not be able to do it yourself. You might think there's a market for it with consumers, but hey, what if you go to a bunch of truck drivers or UPS or somebody who's got 100 trucks or 1,000 trucks and you say, hey, you probably want this on your 1,000 trucks. Would you like to order 1,000 of them for $300 each? And uh, we can build these prototypes for you. We'll deliver them. We need a third on signing, a third on uh, you know delivery, and third net 30. Finding a client who's willing to pay in advance is one of the best ways to test your idea. This is why Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Tilt, and these other services have been so transformative of the hardware space itself. You know, companies like Pebble or Butterfly, uh, Birdie, they would not have been fundable if there wasn't this ability to prove that there was a market for hardware. It's not your God-given right to create a hardware startup. In fact, if we were sitting here 10 years ago, hardware was something that people didn't even think Apple should be doing. They thought it was the domain of Samsung and Sony. They thought anybody who went into the gadget business and the consumer electronics business would be toast. Things have changed radically. You can prototype radically quicker, and you can very easily... Um, raise money for it on Kickstarter. But listen, delivering the product is completely different, and we've seen a lot of high-profile failures when it came to delivery delays, et cetera. For every time we have something as epic as the Oculus Rift, we have two things that are like Coin and Ouya, which were late and or disappointments for people, and some things never even deliver. So um, be careful. Hardware is hard. For more information about the Launch Mobile, Wearables, and IoT Conference, please visit launchmw.com. This is an event we're doing in partnership with our friends at Pivotal Labs, and it's occurring on October 15th and 16th this year, 2015, in San Francisco at Fort Mason. It's going to be an incredible event. We're going to discuss the fact that in 2005, almost nobody on the planet owned a smartphone, but today, 63% of Americans are using them for over three hours a day, which is a lot more than television even. And by 2020, 80% of adults around the globe will have a smartphone. Yes, smartphones, mobile, it's all changing the history of humanity. Where we're going as a species is being changed by mobile phones, wearables, and IoT, even more than the internet and PC revolutions themselves. And we're going to talk about this with the top 2,000 executives in the mobile wearables and IoT event at launch mobile wearables and IoT. You can find out more information about the event taking place on October 15th and 16th here in San Francisco at launchmw.com.